My dear sisters and brothers in the Lord, it was a morning that I will never forget. I think it's actually fair to say that it traumatized me for a very long time. It happened in the place where my uncle affectionately called the Riviera of New York. The rest of us called it Coney Island. And I was there on a beautiful early summer morning with my uncle and my father. And on our way there, my uncle turned to me and said, do you know how to swim? And of course I did not at the time. And he made up his mind to teach me the hard way. For as we were in the waters and I was almost about waist high, unbeknownst to me and unexpectedly, my uncle turned, picked me up and threw me into the water thinking, of course, I would float and overcome my fear and perhaps learn how to swim. What it did was it caused me to go into panic. And even though the water was not deep, I found myself under the waves. And I remember trying to breathe. And the only thing I could do was gasp for air until a hand reached down and dragged me out of the water. That breath that I took as I emerged from the waters of Coney Island, I will never forget. The deepest breath I think I have ever taken. I often remember those waters. I remember that one incident that one breath on this, the vigil in the holy night. For you see, my friends, we gather to celebrate our liberation, our victory, our freedom in Jesus Christ, who on this night broke the chains of death. This is the night that death died in Jesus. And in the ancient church, as we do in our contemporary age, this is the night that traditionally our catechumens are baptized. Of course, we baptize with the pouring of water over a forehead. In the ancient church, after many years of penance and preparation, Adults would be brought to a larger body of water and stripped naked as a sign of the emptying of their lives from sin and would be baptized by being submerged into water fully and completely until their natural breath began to to falter. And as they rose from the water, they would be baptized in the name of the Father. And again, Son, and again, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Each time replacing, one could say, the breath of the natural life we have with the indwelling breath of the Holy Spirit. For you see, my friends, this is the night of baptism, the night where the victory that Christ won in his own life is given to you and me by adoption through the waters that flowed from his pierced side and the waters that have set you and me free. The breath of this life, which will one day fail for all of us, is replaced by a breath that lasts forever. The breath of God indwelling in us. The breath of eternal life. And so we gather here, my friends, to celebrate that the waters of baptism have set us free. However, my friends, I have not been totally unacquainted in my own life with waters 
that threaten. None of us are strangers to them. In times of fear or anxiety, in times of suffering or grief, times of doubt, those are the times when the placid waters of our life can easily lead to storms or where the waters threaten to overwhelm us and we may even find ourselves gasping for air. We are living in such times, you and I, where many are struggling, where the boat of our lives is taking in water that some feel as if they are drowning. But this is the night, my friends, where Christ reaches deep down into those waters and draws us up to breathe his life of grace. For you see, my friends, you and I know as Christians that our lives are not going to be easy and we will always be acquainted with suffering for there is no student greater than his teacher. There is no disciple greater than his master. And we come here to sing our alleluias because we have had the courage to go to Calvary first, to sit with the Lord in his passion, dying and death, and even in the quiet of his burial. As he did, so will we face moments of passion in our own lives, even moments of great agony. But he is the one who has gone before us, the firstborn of all the living and the dead. He is the one who has broken the back of suffering and death for all eternity. And it is in the waters of baptism that we are given that promise that no matter how deep the waves are, no matter how great the storm is, no matter how profound the sufferings you and I have, the hand of Jesus has grasped us in baptism and he will never let go. We are in the palms of the hands of the Father who has made us his sons and daughters, who has given us the breath of his spirit, who has allowed us to share in the victory of this holy night, and my friends, he will never let go. So this is the night of our victory, but this is the night of our hope and our encouragement, particularly this Easter, with all of its challenges and sufferings, loneliness and tears. The waters may be rising around us, but they will not drown us they will not take us. For the risen Lord will set us free. And remember, my friends, that after Jesus rose from the dead and appeared to his apostles, as we will hear next Sunday, to Thomas, the risen, glorified Christ still bore his wounds, hands, feet, and side, to remind us that our sufferings do matter. They are precious to God, but they will one day be healed in the eternal life Christ has won for us this night. So the truth is, I never did learn how to swim. And the truth is, it really doesn't matter now because in the waters of my life that at times have threatened me, as perhaps they at times threaten you, even in those moments when I thought I was going to drown, Christ was there to pick me up out of the waters 
as he does for you because of this night, this most holy night, this night of Christ's victory and ours.